Hey, and welcome back to part two. I'm just gonna let me just change this to smooth, so it looks a little bit better. Yeah, so we're just gonna fi finish everything off. Add some materials so we can finish off in part three, where we'll add the compositing and maybe a depth of focus. But yeah, okay. So let's start off by doing the textures for this uh, this plane here or this circle here. Split this window and I'm going to change this to the uh, node editor. And I'll press N to get rid of that sidebar since we don't need it right now. And I also want to split this window again but I want to drag it down this way. And make sure we can see them nodes. I want to change this now to the UV image editor. This was just a quick renderer to see how it looked. So you can press X to close that out if you've got that. So we're going to be focusing on the texture in now, so switch this to the material tab so we can have a, a preview of how it looks. Okay, so this tablecloth, um, I want to have a kind of tablecloth material. So shift A, let's add in a texture. I'm going to add in an image texture. Uh, image textures, if you need to find some image textures, I'll leave a link in the description where I download mine. Obviously I can't share these with you since I don't own them. Um, so yeah, load in your image texture, which is it's just pretty simple fabric image. Plug that into the color. Then up here we want to select the the image we just brought in, which is the fabric plane. So you can see that's what what the uh, the image is. It's very simple. Um, it's very zoomed in. So we will need to zoom that out later on when we unwrap this. We change it to texture we should be seeing the um, the texture showing up and if you don't that's because it's obviously not been unwrapped so go press 7, numpad 7 is going to top view tab to edit mode A to select everything and then press U to unwrap and we can just unwrap projection, uh, projection from U project from view, that should be fine so we can see straight away that the texture is showing up obviously it's far too big for now but we can come back and change that in a minute if we just press Alt A we can see how it looks so it bends fine, everything looks fine, no trouble there. Tab into edit mode and scale this up. Make sure you're doing the scaling in the UV image editor, not in the in the 3D view, because that'll mess up the scaling of the scene. So that's probably still far too big. Tab to go into edit mode. Mm, a little bit better. I'll probably come back and change that. But for now, let's see how it lo looks. Give that a render. Okay, so we can see it looks fine. Uh, I can also see there's a bit of clipping from the table underneath, but we don't need to worry about that. Once we've baked the uh, the cloth sim, uh, we can delete the table underneath, so we don't need to worry about that. Or you can just delete. Um, Restrict the visibility for it, for the render. I just want to scale this up a bit more. Okay, so it's quite boring. I don't want it just to be a boring white fabric. I want it to have a pattern, which is pretty simple. I want it to be checkered, like a red and white box. So I've got something in mind. Uh, let's just mix this now. Let's shift A, add in and mix RGB and plug this in. I want to drag this to the red and increase the color. I also want to change the blend type from mix to multiply and increase this factor to somewhere about 0.9, maybe 0.8, something like that. So if we just give this a quick render, see how that looks. The only thing we've done is just change the color from the gray to red. That looks okay. scaling is not too bad. So now we just want to add the uh, the checker box effect which is very simple to do. Uh, we also need to add the white colour so what we're going to do is just move these out of the way. Uh, Shift D to duplicate this node. Put it underneath for now. And what we want to do is change this red colour to white. Or again any colour you want, you don't need to do the colour scheme I'm using, you can use any colours you want. So I'm just going to be completely white 
leave it to multiply and we just want to plug this into the top colour like, like we did on the top one there and if we plug this in now it's the same thing but white we just increase this probably to a factor of one not sure if that made much of a difference but uh, there we go so now we need a, a, another texture to control how it looks so we shift A texture and blender comes as standard with these textures here we just want a checkered uh, yeah checkered texture we plug that in we can see what it's doing just two simple colors but we actually want the texture of the uh, the yeah the cloth texture so now if we increase this scale here this will increase the amount of um, the squares we can't actually see it right now because we're in the texture uh, texture view so let me just change this from texture to material and that doesn't look right <laughs> even if we increase it for some reason that does that looks terrible um I think it's because I used a circle rather than a plane. I thought a circle would be fine. Let's just plug these in for now. And that's gonna give us the colours and the material. We'll just see how this looks for now. Press Alt A to cache in the frames. Let's give that a render, see how it looks. Yeah, I think the, the pattern should be completely squares. There shouldn't be any of these circle type things. It must be because I used a circle. So let's just delete this tablecloth. And since the Shift A add in a plane, let's just scale this up a bit. Apologies if you can't see anything, um, it's all white. Uh, let's just add the texture. We already made the texture, so we don't need to do it again, which is a good thing. Now that it seems to work fine, uh, let's just drag this up a bit so it's not sitting on the table. We also want to tab into edit mode and press W. I'm going to subdivide this a few times. Again, you don't need to go crazy on the amount of, uh, the amount of times you subdivide it. Okay, so make sure you add the cloth simulation. Again, apologies for this, I should have done it as a plane in the first part, but it's my bad. I guess you learn from your mistakes, I assumed that the circle would have been fine, but anyway, let's scale this down because that's far too big. And also the squares are far too big. So if you want to increase the squares, you just increase the scale here. Let's just increase this. Uh, let's say about 8 maybe yeah let's just say 8 for now if we press Alt A ok also the shading needs fixing it's still using flat shading so we need to do that, press T and we just hit smooth shading and also let's give it a subdivision surface modifier again don't worry about that part there that's showing through that won't be seen in the final render okay so yeah it's still in, uh, I need to increase this maybe 12 maybe a bit more that looks fine yeah that looks okay so let's just save this. Again, make sure you save it a lot, especially when you're using cloth sims and more vertices and loads of faces. It could uh, get a bit messy. Let's just go over to the Physics tab. Let's press Alt-A to cache in these, these frames here. Make sure you're happy with how it looks. And if you're making an animation, you can add in a wind. You can so keep the, the cloth flowing. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit Bake bake these frames now so I don't need to worry about it again and also it won't slow down the, the 3D view as well I just want to select maybe one frame frame 72 looks fine
So now we can delete the table that's underneath since we've baked the frames. So let's just select the table, delete that. And now if we scrub through the timeline, you'll see that obviously the since it's baked, it won't move, it won't drop, and it'll stay the same. Okay, so let's give this a render and see how it looks. Make sure everything's working fine. Mm, straight away I can see that we need to unwrap the, the planes because it's not using the texture, the cloth texture which is no big deal. Let's just jump back to 3D view. If we hit numpad 7 to go to top view, select the plane, hit tab A to select everything. U to unwrap, project from view. And then scale this up as much as you want. And then the scale for the squares is on the material, the scale for this so they don't, they're not connected, so that's fine. Whatever you scale one thing, it's not going to affect the other thing, which is brilliant. And I think that still might be a bit too big. Yeah, it looks far too big. Scale it even more. So again, the more you scale this, the, the different the texture will look. This looks a lot more rough, coarse type of material. If you scale up a lot more, it'll look a lot finer. So it all depends on what kind of material you're trying to go for as well. Um, that kind of looks like a picnic sort of blanket to me. Yeah, that should be fine, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> we can come back and change it later on. But we also want to add a little bit of bump to it. And it's a very simple way of adding a bump. What we can do is Shift A, add in a colour. Mix, uh, we want RGB curves, no. So that's Shift A, we want RGB curves. Um, so make sure screencast is working uh, that's not an RGB curves for some reason I've selected a mix let's just delete that, hit X to delete shift A and we want RGB curves <laughs> that's what we want ok so we've took the feed out from the image and we've plugged it into an RGB curves and what I'm doing is just uh, making an S curve to play around with the, the values, the contrast values, and this will help get a better maybe bump map, if you want to call it. I just want to shift A, a hue and saturation, because there's a lot of blues and greens in it still. So desaturate that as well. Uh, make sure the diffuse is plugged into the surface, and this one is plugged into the displacement. Um, right now it's using the the image as a 100% displacement, so it's going to be 100% bumpy. So what we need to do is go to Shift A, add in a converter and color ramp, plug that in there. And if we, this is with 100% bump, we'll just give this a quick render. You see, that's far too bumpy, so I probably need to knock that back. So the way we can do that if we select we select this black handle and just drag it closer to the white, it becomes less bumpy. So again, how much bump you want on it um, depends on your scene, I guess. Depends what you're going for. So it's entirely up to you how much bump you put on it. But I think that looks okay for now. I can move on from here. You can always come back later on and make adjustments if you need to. So I think that material there is okay for now. What we can do is work on the bottle. Let's start with it. I just want to delete this label. I was going to add a label to the top. Uh, for some reason it's the two. <laughs> I don't know why I, did, why I added two. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, I, I don't want to add a label to the top now. I was going to, but I decided against it. So let's just delete these two labels for some reason. I probably created twice. Okay, so we've also done the same thing for the, the label, I guess. It shouldn't have been added, so we can delete that. Uh, yeah, so there's only one label. That black thing was just a spare, I guess. Yeah, you got a spare. Okay, so delete that one. So the only thing we need is the label, the bottle, and the wine inside it. Let's start with the label. Let's go over to the material panel. What we, like we did with the tablecloth, we're going to press Shift A and add in uh, an image. So we're going to Shift A, Texture, 
image texture. I'm going to open up our image. This is just a quick um, wine label I created. Very simple to do. Also, yeah, change it in the UV image editor so we can see it. Let's plug this in. And as everything, before we see it, we need to unwrap it. So let's go to press numpad 1 to go to front view. Tab into edit mode. A to select everything and U to unwrap. And it's not completely perfect. So we need to scale this up on the Y. And then G on the Y. And again, you can make some adjustments on the fly if it's a bit too squashed or if it's not squashed enough. You can just make some more... Uh, yeah, make some more adjustments. So I'm just going to squash it in a bit. Yeah, it looks fine. So you've got your label done. Uh, in fact, we still need to add another node since a label would be um, shiny, I guess, unless it's a paper label rather than a glossy one. But anyway, the one I have in mind, it's got a bit of gloss to it. So I'll shift A, add in a mix shader. Shift A, add in a glossy shader, connect those up, like so. That's far too much, let's reduce the factor to say around 0.1 or 0.2. So something you're happy with. Yeah, it should be fine. And you know, Again, the roughness depends on what sort of label you're going for. Um, if you're trying to be accurate and you're trying to copy something in the real world, you'll want to try and find out you know how that material reacts. Some labels with gloss are not always um, as rough so again it depends on what you're trying to create. So that's point 0.2 should be fine for me, point 0.266. Let's have a look. Actually we won't see anything since there's no light in the scene right now. We won't see any um, reflections or we won't see much. So yeah we probably need to add a, la a lamp or even a sun. We can do that. Okay, so I can notice as well that the uh, the checkers for the white has gone grey, so we can fix that as well. We also need to texture the cork, and then we can go ahead and fix the values for the glass. And we should be able to move on to the next part. So let's do the cork now. With the cork selected, same thing as we did with the... Uh, the label and the tablecloth, we just want to shift A, add in a texture. And this texture, uh, again I'll put a link in the description, comes from a website called CG Textures, or it was called CG Textures, I think it's changed its name now. Uh, we want to change this to the cork texture, so we can see it. So let's plug this in. Again you can get your textures from wherever, This that's the place I use. I've used it for quite a while now, so um, I've been happy with how they work so there's no point so I've not needed to look for any new ones but if you do know any other places that share textures um, then yeah feel free to throw it in the link below so tab into edit mode and then press U to unwrap and we don't need to worry about this unwrap it's a little bit wonky and it's a little bit wobbly but uh, I think it's not even going to be that noticeable that looks fine for me Uh, what we can do, we can scale it up to about so. Bring everything back. And also maybe change the colour, I want it a bit more orangey. So Shift A, we can go colour, mix RGB, and you can do this with any texture if you want to uh, change the colours. I want to change this to multiply and then change this colour to be a bit more orange. So it's not much, it's just a subtle uh, de uh, difference, you probably won't notice. Okay, so again, if you also want to uh, add the bump to this, because we do, since it's a bumpy object, a bumpy surface, if we plug this straight into the uh, displacement, and then converter, colour ramp, plug that in, so that will now control how much bump we have. But if we 
get a preview of this, it's actually a colour image, so I'm not sure how much it'll help, but I'm just going to shift A, go to colour, in fact let's go converter RGB, we're going to convert the RGB to black and white, so that might help a little bit, and again make sure the diffuse is plugged into the surface at the top, and this colour ramp is plugged into the di displacement at the bottom, and just move around until you're happy with how much bumps on the on the object again give that a render to see if you're happy with it and it's, since it's going to be so small it's not even a big de uh it's not a big detail to worry about okay so there are the comp the more complicated uh, materials done um I'm just going to shift a add in a lamp I'm going to add in a sun lamp going to drag this move out of the way and press R to rotate then on the X and just move it around then again I'm going to press R to rotate but this time on the Z uh, let's make sure the shadows are pointing this way for now see how it looks again make sure you press Control S to save it you don't want it to crash So let's do the uh, the IOR values for the glass. The IOR stands for the index of refraction, which every object that has that you can see through is uh, has a level of refraction. I guess maybe not everything. I'm not sure. I'll leave a link in the description and uh, to this wiki page, and it has all the um, the typical values. If we click this here, number three in the contents, typical values, it gives you a basic list of all the index of refractions. And if we click there to give us more, we can see all these different uh, liquids, solids, different materials that um, have a refractive index. And a lot of these you probably won't use. I probably I'll never use. I don't even know what a benzene is, some sort of liquid. But yeah, maybe someone can let me know what benzene is. <laughs> yeah, I never make most of these, but it's good to know that there is a value if you need to make a, an accurate um, replica. So what I want to do is find glass, and crown glass is fine. So anywhere between 1.50 and 1.54 will give you that type of glass. So it's up to you on which one you want to use. I'm just going to change. I'm just going to change this now for the wine glass to be 1.50. So it doesn't make much difference. And again, if you're thinking, well, I don't really, I don't see that much difference at all. Um, it is more for to be completely accurate. You can always get a different value or make a different value, and it doesn't matter. Okay, so I, the same thing for the bottle. Um, I will change that to be like 1.53 maybe later on, but for now I'm just going to give it the same. I'm not sure if wine's a different uh, value. I guess it's not because I can't see it on here, so I guess it'll be the same as water, which is 1.330. So I'm going to change that now for the wine. 1.330. Again, this you don't have to be this accurate. It depends on who you're working for. If you if you're working for a client, then they want to be 100% accurate. Then you will have to find out what the IOR values are for the objects you're creating. If it's just for you and you just want to get um, m maybe a decent looking image, you don't have to be as accurate. Um, it looks fine for now. I'm probably later on. I'm going to add a light to, you know behind the glass so it shines, makes it dead bright. But for now, that looks fine. Probably lighten up the green glass as well, the green bottle. Also, we'll lighten up the uh, the squares. I want to go ahead and model in the background. I'm just going to align the camera first. before I start modeling anything in the background so I don't have to model things I don't need to. So maybe like this, I want to see the tablecloth down at the bottom and I also want to see maybe the top of the bottle, so that looks fine. 
see I'm going to go through here now um, and just remodel everything um, there's no point in me explaining everything because it's the same as when we modeled the, bot uh, the bottles it's the same just extrude uh, add the textures and yeah you're done what we'll do is uh, leave a link in the description with this background as a project file so you can download it and use it. I won't be able to share the textures since again I don't own the textures so it'll just be a blank background so all you'll need to do is go in load it up and um, yeah just add the textures to it if you want to or you can go ahead and model in the background yourself um, and then we can move on to the next part. Thank mm -hmm. you. 